guys it's happening taiwan semiconductor has been popping off today warren buffett bought four billion dollars worth of shares of this company now if you load this up here you see the stock price currently at the time of making this video it is eighty dollars and fifty cents and it's shot up eleven almost eleven percent today from seventy three dollars a share now to eighty dollars and fifty cents a share that's a pretty huge jump now the only problem i have with this is do people just buy companies because other phenomenal invest investors buy it? I mean, listen, copying is a thing, right? Monish Pabrai and other great investors have admitted to being a copy of Warren Buffett and other phenomenal investors. But ultimately, you have to understand what the business does first before you actually copy an investment or be a copycat. If you're just buying something with a complete ignorance and have no idea what this company does, you're going to wind up in a lot of trouble. So in this video today, folks, we're going to take a look at the numbers of Taiwan Semiconductor and figure out the intrinsic value of this company. So using the stock research app, and I'll load this up right here, we are ranking this company an 8 out of 10. Now, this snapshot here of the business, this scorecard takes a look at the company's cash flow statements, income statements, and balance sheets to get this score. Now, the only points that they're getting deducted is in their PE ratio that's sitting above 22.5, where we want to see this company's PE ratio below that, as well as their share dilution sitting at, it's only zero, okay, hold on, it's zero percent. So that means they're not actually diluting you in shares. Technically, this number should be green. This category should be green. Because if a company is not diluting you, that's actually a really good thing. St keeping the share, the share outstanding shares the same is actually pretty good. It's only a problem if they are diluting you with more shares. But everything else that this company is doing is phenomenal. So, as you know, Taiwan Semiconductor Company has been responsible for a huge number of uh, supplying other chip manufacturers like AMD, Nvidia, Intel, Apple, so on and so forth. So, with that in mind. Taking a look at all this green on the board makes a lot of sense. So the current ratio is currently pretty high, sitting at 2.25, indicating they have enough assets on hand to cover the liabilities. That's important as we travel through uncertain economic times. Return on equity is high. It's above 15%. It's really good for this business. EPS growth. That means your EPS has been increasing over the last five years. Also super important. The debt to equity is low, which is great. That goes hand in hand with the current ratio because we want to see companies leverage their capital through equity and not taking on debt. That's super important, folks. Their net income is up, free cash flow is up, revenue growth is up, and the return on invested capital is sitting at 23.41%. That is absolutely massive. Compare that to the trillion 12 months, sitting at 23.99%. This company knows how to flip equity in a very effective manner. And if you take a look at this business, the spread of this company for the 52 weeks is $59 on the low end, $145 on the high end. So I'm glad it's come down quite a bit because the, this is phenomenal. This is great. And now the PE ratio is currently sitting at 15.67. When a tech company's PE ratio is sitting around this point, this is imperative. This is great to see because usually tech companies trade at a premium, at least for the last couple of years, because Borrowing money was so easy and tech was all the rage in this bull market. So now that the tech companies have been slowing down a little bit, this is actually a good time to actually potentially buy into this business. Now, while the numbers are looking great and we know what the company does, obviously they make chips, they, they manufacture to a lot of these top businesses and I've covered AMD and Nvidia in the past. What's the intrinsic value of this business? So right here in the bottom section is the price analysis section where we can put three different assumptions. So I like to do conservative, moderate, and aggressive. And I'd like to do a 10-year analysis, folks. And if you're enjoying this video so far, folks, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the channel. So I like when I get notifications interrupting my video. So what does this mean, folks? So for revenue growth, I'm trying to stay as conservative as possible over the next 10 years because here's the thing. As we approach a recession and uncertain economic times, it doesn't make sense to put these astronomical numbers in. So giving myself an, enough margin of safety is imperative. So with that being said, I did 10, 11, 10, 11 and 12% revenue growth. Profit margin, I kept it just slightly the same but what we've been shown over our historic numbers. Like this, this box here of historic numbers, of numbers that they have currently done. So for me, it makes the most amount of sense to play within this sandbox 
and not go too high above those numbers nor too low because going too high would mean I'm speculating going too low would mean I'm being way too conservative so we don't want to do that profit margin six within these numbers here as well as our free cash flow margin same thing I'm just playing within the one year to five year numbers as well as our price to free cash flow and PE ratio I like finding numbers um, beneath 20 uh, that makes the most amount of sense for me. That's a fairly fair multiple. You're not it's not so much of a premium So 14 16 and 18 is usually my go-to for a lot of these companies Especially with tech companies as well as desired return of 13% scroll down to see and our average calculation comes out to be $80 and 25 cents for our calculation current price $80 and 46 cents. It's pretty much trading at fair value with these low revenue growth numbers in play now could they beat these revenue growth numbers over the next 10 years potentially it is currently a 377.555 billion dollar company they could potentially do that with the huge demand that semiconductors have currently in this space and in this market there's obviously some potential for large amounts of growth so they could very well be beating these numbers indicating that this price is potentially worth a lot more now before this Warren Buffett pump that existed uh, prior to today, it was below that number. So you begin this company at somewhat of a discount, assuming these numbers here. So what do I want to see personally? I would like to see these numbers drop a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen because now that Warren Buffett's been, you know, picking up large amounts of shares of this company and other people have caught wind, you're going to see people probably jumping on the stock once again. And for good reason. It's, I mean, I've been waiting for this company to come down a little bit in price, and I've analyzed this company in the, in the past. Um, I may have missed the boat, but that's fine. There's other companies out there. There's, so, there's like 10,000 different companies to take a look at. But eventually, this will be in my wheelhouse of a company to pick up. The only time, the only time will tell. Um, if I missed the boat, oh well. But if you're looking at p p picking up this company, definitely take a look at my software that I have in front of me here. Follow the links in the description box below. Start a seven day free trial and you can instantly screen these companies within an instant and understand what the intrinsic value of the company is and where they actually stand financially. And if you want to take a look at things more of a, from a visual perspective, we have obviously have all the income statements, cash flow statements and balance sheets as we listed out over here. But the charts section is phenomenal to take a look at things visually to see what everything where everything lies, who are the top 10 institutional holders and how does it compare against spy so on and so forth so with that being said folks Taiwan semiconductor currently it's pretty much at fair value at even with that price bump now if it ends, ends up dropping goes a little bit southbound it might be worth picking up the only thing that I have an issue with with this company apart from everything that's going on it, it, the statements are phenomenal is the geopolitical issue that they have with China and China has been on uneasy ground with obviously with Taiwan so if anything kind of goes down between those two nations I feel like this might be an issue in the future and that's gonna affect a lot of other companies as well that's only one red flag I see with that anyways those are my opinions if you like the video hit the like button and the subscribe button I will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching